guys, Tim here. Today we're going to look at this MSI FM2A75MA E35 board. Uh, I'm going to be using this in a uh, home theater PC build, which I think is one of the perfect applications for this board and chipset and uh, APU from AMD. Uh, of course this supports the A10, A8, A6, or A4. It is uh, has HDMI on board, which is a great reason to use it. Um, most, you're also going to get you know good quality Radeon graphics out of this uh, with the uh, new APUs from AMD. The, they're the Trinity APUs. Uh, Windows 8 and Windows 7 ready. It has uh, built-in uh, AMD uh, memory profile technology. Uh, of course, it's an AMD chipset. Uh, it's the A75 chipset. Um, we have a friendly GUI, one clock, or sorry, one touch overclocking, uh, the OC uh, overclocking profile export, and gaming optimized mouse. Um, of course, as the OC Genie 2 for overclocking. On the back, you know, it's you know, overclocking, pretty much those four things from the front. Uh, the specifics that actually matter here are it supports you know the A10, A8, A6, and A4 FM2 socket. Uh, it holds two DIMMs. It supports up to 1866 or um, overclock to 2133, up to 16 gigs max. You have one uh, PCIe 2.0. Oh yeah, this is an MATX board, guys. Uh, supports H ATI HD 7000 series Radeon with integrated HDMI, so that's the the APU, uh, and supports the AMD Dual Graphics technology, which is um, you guys can check that out on my uh, Trinity review. That's basically you can pair certain uh, Radeon cards with the APU. It has 7.1 uh, HD audio. 1 gigabit LAN, 6 SATA ports, um, a whole mess of USB ports, and uh, we'll get into the back I.O. when we open this up. So inside we have two SATA 3 cables. Um, they're both, let's see here, outside, 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 outside. One straight to one L. your driver's disk. Um, use this if you need the LAN driver. If not, throw it away and download the newest drivers from uh, MSI. We have a quick installation guide. So, mostly words. A few pictures. We have your manual. So that's you know probably what you're going to want to use if you're installing this. We have your back plate. Um, this is one thing. You know I wish I get this. This is a a value oriented board. I understand that. Um, I'd love to see you know better color coding on the back plates as well as better shielding. I think everybody. Um, should do um, the, the extra EM shielding uh, for the back plates, especially in a board that's obviously, you know, a good majority of the time going to be used for a media center PC build. And then we have the board itself. Oh, nice to see. A little bit of foam in the bottom there to protect the, the contacts on the board. You know, little details like that do matter, you know, the better the traces stay on this board uh, during shipping the better off you know the better the longevity of the board so the less it gets knocked around so here we have the board we'll start off by uh, we have one four pin so you know this is an FM2 board guys this is not your your super high end overclocking um, you know, board. You can be able to overclock a little, but not a ton. 
Um, you know, basically probably what I would be looking to overclock on this is actually the GPU part of the APU. We have your standard um, AMD mounting system. Two DIMM slots and again uh, 1866 or overclocked to 2133. Uh, on this setup that really does matter quite a bit. Um, the faster the RAM speed, the better the performance of the integrated graphics because the AP or the GPU on the Trinity chip uses the RAM uh, from your uh, system. So, you know, whereas, you know, most people I'd recommend, you know, get four gigs of RAM for, a, you know, a home theater PC. I definitely say, you know, if you want to hedge your bets, get eight gigs, get one, you know, uh, one eight gig kit, so two fours, or get you know two eights. Um, that's the most that this can handle, or two eights. We have. I'm doing a quick visual search for the fan header. So we have one four pin fan, CPU fan header here. One three pin fan header here. And one three pin fan header here. So, you know, for what I'm going to be using this for, perfect. You know, I only have a few system fans. I can use Y adapters. I'm going to use low voltage everywhere. So, not that. That's a four pin, by the way. Um, one 16X uh, PCIe 2.0, two 1X 2 2.0s, two and a legacy uh, PCI slot. That's actually really nice to see, um, especially in this market where you may be using, you know, maybe you're going to use this for a home server build or, you know, something where you want to put a, you know, an older RAID card in or you have an older HD uh, a TV tuner that you may want to use. Uh, down along the bottom, we have a USB 3.0, uh, a regular USB, another regular USB. Um, I'm actually not sure. I'll have to look up and get back to you guys on uh, what the other four jumpers are. Um, I'm pretty sure they're also USB jumpers, but um, they're all missing the corner. So I think they're all USB 2.0. But I'll have to look that up and get back to you guys. We have built-in speaker. Six, the primary reason to buy this board in my opinion, six, uh, SATA, uh, three, six gigabit per second ports. Uh, your chipset is under that little heatsink. 24 pin. And I'm looking for, but unsuccessful to find. Oh, here we go. So JP JFP1, uh, this is an interesting layout. So this is your power LED, hard drive LED reset and power switch is that jumper. Let's see if I can find any silk screening. I got it there. Sorry about that. So the silk screening is actually all the way up here. The jumper's down here. It'd be nice to see, you know, most manufacturers put it right underneath. Um, it'd be nice to see MSI you know get things a little closer together maybe but you know all in all you know it's a, a brown PCB it's nothing special to look at but you know, if you guys go up to Amazon and check out this board I think you'll see that you know MSI has put together an extremely uh, well feature setted board for the price that they're selling this for I don't know that you know, they're one of the big three, Asus, uh, Gigabyte, and MSI. You really usually can't go wrong with their boards. I know some people have had bad experiences with, you know, one of the manufacturers over another. But for the price that this board comes in at, if you want to build a budget PC that's going to perform pretty damn good for the money, um, you really can't beat this. And especially if you want to build, you know, a home theater PC, guys. Um, of course, using uh, Windows 7, not Windows 8, uh, buy it because there is really no uh, competition for the FM2 
um, MATX boards right now. So I have combo PS2, two USB uh, 2.0, a VGA, a DVI, two more USB 2.0, an HDMI, two USB 3.0, your gigabit LAN, two more USB 2.0s, your 7.1 audio. So, you know, extremely well feature setted. Uh, and then, of course, on the back, you have the very nice, substantial, you know, built in backplate um, for the AMD parts, which I think, you know, I wish Intel would do this where, you know, they would include the, the mounting gear with the boards. And then, of course, the FM2 socket. So they're still um, using, AMD still using pins on the chip rather than pins in the sockets, like the new, like, LGA1155. Uh, uh, so. But in the end, you just have to be a little carefuler putting the CPU in, or in this case, the APU, and everything will be fine. So that's my first look and unboxing at the MSI FM A75MA E35 motherboard. Uh, we'll be featuring this motherboard in an upcoming uh, home uh, media center build. So stay tuned for that. It should be, you know, not revolutionary, but I think this uh, this motherboard and CPU setup we're going to use the A6 CPU uh, will be extremely, you know, cost effective and, you know, for a home media center PC, uh, it's going to be, you know, pretty sharp. It's going to have pretty good built-in graphics. Um, you know, I who would want to put uh, maybe somebody, maybe for gaming on your on your TV, um, but why would you want to put you know in a PC you want to keep as quiet as humanly possible? Why would you want to put an add-in you know like say a 660 Ti with an aftermarket cooler on it? Right, that's going to be noisy. You know, I want something that is going to fit in an HTPC case, or you know if you're building this for you know, a student would be a great application for this if they're not, you know, if you're building them something to actually do homework and research and, you know, maybe play, you know, simple games like League of Legends or, you know, small stuff that, you know, not first person shooters. Um, this is the perfect combo, you know, the, the chip and board under $200, the, you know, like I said, the comparable Intel part is two hundred dollars for you know for the for the APU that's comparable to this. The the CPU itself is two hundred dollars. The APU itself, so it's hard to go wrong. I wish you know the the one complaint I can have is I I really wish AMD would put a little more effort into um, the CPU side of their APUs, but that's not MSI's fault. MSI has made an excellent board for especially like it's a very you know it's it's value oriented this is not you know the highest featured board you're gonna find MSI make um, but for what you're gonna use this for you know extremely good quality extremely good price and how can you ask for more than that so this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV We'll see you next time.